As I had mentioned in the introduction episode of the Asking for a Friend podcast, years ago when I started to think about writing a book, it was because I have so many friends with interesting stories that are very relatable and that no matter the situation or the struggle, with perseverance, self-reflection, or acceptance, we can come out on the other side of things. During the pandemic, what started as the book became this podcast. And as I was putting together a list of topics, I knew I had to do a show on LGBTQ families and the impact it has and how they too come out on the other side. As I was putting together a list of possible guests, I had the perfect one in mind, and that was two years ago. And thank goodness she said yes to being on the show. Health, wellness, career, family, life, and the better side of 50. I'm your host, Michelle Follin. And this is Asking for a Friend. Hello, friends. Today, our guest is Holly Bridgers. Welcome to Asking for a Friend, Holly. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. I am really thrilled you're here as well. This is two years ago. I was putting together a list of topics that I wanted to cover. Mm -hmm. I knew I really had to do at least one show on LGBTQ plus families. I wrote your name down, Holly Bridgers. Oh. And the fact that when we connected, you said yes. I was like, yay, I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I'm honored. I am really honored, Michelle. Thank you for thinking of me. I think it's always helpful if you tell our listeners just a little bit more about you. By definition, I'm a working woman. I'm age 54. I work in a family business that's in manufacturing. We're actually a supplier to the funeral industry. I'm a divorcee. More than any of those things, I am a proud mother of not one but two LGBTQ plus children. Yes, you are. <laughs> You've got two wonderful children. I can say as an outsider, sort of, all appearances is that you have a fabulous relationship with both children. Thank you. I feel like I do. That was really my goal in mothering. And you've achieved that. Thank you. Kudos. I would love for you to introduce your girls to our listeners so they uh, girls, no. <laughs> See, children, I'm going to get better at this. Your children to our listeners so they understand who they are. Absolutely. Then we'll talk a little bit about childhood and all that other stuff. Absolutely. I have two children. I use the word children because of their gender. So I have Georgia Bridgers, who is my daughter and she is bisexual, and I have Hope Bridgers, who is my adult child, and they are non-binary. They use they, them pronouns. And Michelle, don't be hard on yourself because <laughs> it is a leap into a new language, but an important leap to make. Trying counts. I'm trying to be respectful, right? Because I know it's how they identify. They both identify as LGBTQ+. I was kind of giggling because I said, is it a spectrum? Is it a rainbow? Do we just say community? How would you describe it? Every single one of those things. Okay. It is a rainbow spectrum of genders within a community that maybe has for many years felt as outsiders. Yeah. And now, luckily in this day and age, we're learning and growing and becoming inclusive. Yeah. I think it's important to go back to their childhood. Mm -hmm. Because I've known them since they were really young. 
mm-hmm. like kindergarten, first grade. Tell me a little bit about Georgia as she was growing up. Sure. Georgia was the epitome of all things girly. She was a ballerina. She loved dress up. She played with dolls. She was a more delicate, willowy build. As an adult, she loves makeup. She comes across and presents very feminine. And sometimes that throws people off because they're like, you're so girly. She's like, yes, you can have whatever personality type you want and still identify as a different gender. I think that's important to point out. There's really not a stereotype. You can look one way on the outside, but inside you feel differently that it doesn't quite match the outside. Correct. And then how about Hope? Hope is the epitome of a tomboy. Hope was always marching to the beat of their own drum. When Hope was a little kid, Hope would play with dolls, but dress them up in full sports paraphernalia. (laughs) (laughs) Hope even played baseball on the boys' baseball team. Hope liked to dress like a boy shopping on the boys' side of the gap. I'm using the word boy to describe a social construct of the boys' side. It's funny how now a lot of clothing stores and brands are doing everything that they can to not be male or female. But we even had, and I say we because during my children's formative years, I was married and we would allow Hope to wear boy swim trunks, the rash guard shirts. That was how Hope was comfortable. That's okay. At no point during that time did it cross my mind, oh, Hope must be non-binary or Hope is going to be part of the LGBTQ plus grouping. Nothing like that ever crossed my mind. I just thought Hope's a tomboy. Let's stick with Hope. When was the radar going up and you're going, okay, I think she's going to be making a decision here? It was funny. In high school, I remember very specifically thinking to myself, Hope is a girl who's going to like boys. In hearing Hope explain their journey That was absolutely not going on. I didn't for sure know that Hope was gay until Hope told me on, I've got the exact date, it was October 11th, 2016. That was actually National Coming Out Day. I'll be darned. Yeah, that time Hope told me that she, because she was still using that pronoun, that she was bisexual. And it is a real journey for kids to know themselves even aside from sexuality when they're in their teens. About a half a year later, Hope then said, actually, I'm gay. I'm attracted to females. Hope told me that in their junior year, they still felt really lost and Hope described it as, I don't feel like I have a gender. I have a female body, but I don't feel like I'm a guy or a girl. Hmm. Not being a part of a group is hard, but then to make it, you don't even know where you fit in, in life. Hope was actually doing research to find out different labels There are so many, and fortunately, in 2017 and 18, there was a lot of information about that on the internet, and Hope read the word non-binary and realized, that's what I am. And then Hope came out as non-binary July of 2020. Got it. That's a four-year process of figuring out who you are. It comes with a lot of challenges. Well, that was my next question, Holly. 
how did she handle this mentally? Because I know it's tough being a teenager anyway. Yeah. There's so much social pressure to not feel like you fit in with the rest of the girls your age. I'll quit talking here in a second, but no, it's important. I have quite a few friends with daughters who are gay, and I know there have been lots of struggles and trying to figure out how they fit in, who they fit in with, and those teenage years and early adult years can be extremely difficult. They are. I think the fact that both of my children are gay helps because knowing that you have a sibling that understands not only how you maybe feel, but also your family history can help. That's rare. For both Hope and Georgia, whenever they have shared with me that they are struggling, I want to support them in any and every way that I can. And I realize I am not the expert. That's when I will look with them for experts, either through counseling or through groups that support the LGBTQ plus community or even the internet, which I personally use myself, like how to be a supportive parent because you go through a lot of emotions as a parent when your children are coming out. When Georgia came out as bisexual, That was in 2018, and that was a horrendous, I shouldn't use the word horrendous. That was a a word that means horrendous, but not necessarily negative, shock. You don't want to explain this as a horrendous thing. Was it more of like a gut punch? Yeah, a shock, very much a shock because the way Georgia presented through childhood as a girly girl And when I heard the word bisexual, I felt fear because I didn't truly understand what it meant. A lot of people think of bisexuality means promiscuity or that it's just a phase. Both of those things could not be more insulting to someone who is bisexual. Not saying that it wouldn't be a phase as a person is learning who they really are, like what Hope went through, and not saying that a person may or may not be promiscuous, but that has nothing to do with being bisexual. And bisexual simply means you're attracted to more than just the opposite sex. And it happens organically. So how does Georgia identify now? still bisexual, but Georgia is in a female relationship. Georgia has a girlfriend named Tori for four years. They live together and they've built a home together with a dog and a cat. It's a monogamous relationship with a female, but Georgia still identifies as bisexual. Both your children have significant others. That's right. Hope also has a girlfriend named Abby, who's darling. Abby and Tori are gifts to not only my children, but to myself. They are just like a straight person's children would have their significant others in my book. Just knowing your children are happy, isn't that all we really want at the end of the day? Absolutely. Now that they're a little older, Mm -hmm. Hope's in a sorority at school, which is fantastic. Thank you. And Georgia was actually in the same sorority, correct? Correct. It's so more accepting. Not every sorority and every college and every state in the country, but fortunately for my children... Their sorority recognizes that there's a lot of different kinds of people. Their sex would be female, but their gender may not be girl. Mm -hmm. Hope is a good example of that. 
there are still challenges. One thing I wanted to touch on is language. In sororities, you use the word sisterhood. One thing that Georgia and Hope have spoken with each other about is that non-binary person can really feel constantly aware of their difference because of language. For example, Hope doesn't feel like a sister. And Hope in Georgia came up with the name Sibster, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was so cute. It is cute. A non-binary person would want to be called a sibling, not necessarily a brother or a sister. And then there's situations where the name hasn't been created yet, like aunt. Mm -hmm. I feel as things move on, language will become more robust and well-rounded for all the different genders. I know a lot of people are like, I don't get the they, them. It's not grammatically correct. And Hope said, if you meet someone who is non-binary and they go by they, them, just imagine two little images of the person you're talking to on their shoulder, that that is the they, them. It's not so much I'm plural, but it's just that I am not being male or female. And when I'm talking even to my best friends in the whole world, since grammar school, if I accidentally call Hope, she, I will stop and correct myself out of respect for my child. I want to get it right. And the only way I'll get it right is by constantly correcting myself. And for my friends, I tell them one, I might mention it again, but I don't want to be the hammer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I use they, them. I explain it to others, and then I hope that they try themselves. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. You're so nice, Holly, anyway. Oh, You're just you. nice. I do want to really talk about both of them with their social media presence. Yeah. Because I think there's a lot of impact that they make within their community with what they have started and done through social media. So can you touch on that a little bit? Absolutely. Georgia has always been theatrical. And years ago, Georgia decided to really ramp up on YouTube. And this was when Georgia was in high school. And Georgia covered funny, fun things. Then Georgia came out on YouTube as bisexual. It took Georgia two years to come out. Georgia did it by creating this adorable little skit where she played two characters, both herself, both talking to herself about coming out. And that was where Georgia really stood in her bisexuality. Less than a month later, I had known Georgia was bisexual and George is like, mom, do you want to be on my YouTube and maybe you could ask me questions? I'm like, yeah, sure. And it was kind of in the back of our head. And it was the type of thing where I got home from work one day and I'm like, Georgia would now be a good time. And she said, sure, let's do it. And thank goodness we did it that way because it was so authentic. Nothing was scripted. Nothing. That wasn't scripted. Not one bit, just like you and I are talking freely now. Right. Georgia didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what Georgia was going to ask. Somehow that went viral. It got 5.8 million views. And when that went viral, it changed everything for Georgia. Everything. Wow. Yeah. So all the way until about a year ago, Georgia was extraordinarily active on her YouTube for gay subject matter. Georgia has made a career out of it, and Georgia now lives in L.A. on her own. Well, with her girlfriend, but is making it. Covered all kinds of subjects to help children.
I wrote a few of the topics down. Is it okay if I mention them? Oh, yeah. Okay, so can you be religious and gay? Holidays in the closet. How we knew we were gay. Being bi in a sorority. How I knew I was bisexual. The time I fell for a straight girl. Coming out as non-binary. Georgia then incorporated hope in a lot of the subject matter, and then Hope got extremely popular on TikTok and uses TikTok primarily for Hope's platform. And now Georgia is really focusing on acting. Georgia has a podcast that she also interacts on called On My Mind, but her main focus right now is acting, and she is able to continue her career through Instagram, branding through Instagram. That's awesome. Thank you. That's really great. Again, we want to make sure that children who and young adults that are going through this process, because it is a process, Mm -hmm. that they have some kind of an outlet, someone that they can identify with. It's really super important. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that both your girls have become advocates in their own right Mm -hmm. for young people, which I think is fantastic. It was funny, you mentioned the YouTube video that the two of you did together. You had posted it, I think, on Facebook or something. So I went and I tuned in. This is years ago. Yeah. I thought it was really great. I thought you guys had scripted that. No. (laughs) Thank you. Thoroughly impressed. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. That was great. You mentioned something about how it's important to have an outlet or support. I read in a blog that was distributed by the Trevor Project, which is a very supportive charity that supports the LGBTQ plus community, that the presence of just one accepting adult can reduce suicide risk by 40%. Just one. Yeah. That's amazing. That's why it's even more important for these, especially teens, to realize no matter how accepted they are within a biological family, there is this robust community that completely accepts and supports them. Let's talk about family then. Mm -hmm. They came out to you, Mm -hmm. but you've got a big family. Yeah. (laughs) How did that go? And how did they tell dad? Again, they were both incredibly lucky. My ex-husband, Michael, was fully supportive. And he's from the South, from North Carolina. His family was also supportive. It's vital to let yourself learn something new about your kids and embrace it. It was funny telling the rest of the family because of course my children wanted to tell their father last, which I think a lot of people are like, tell dad last anyway. (laughs) Dads are always the last to know. (laughs) That's right. That's right. They told my mother, they told their friends, their cousins, their step-siblings, their stepmother, extremely supportive. It's a miracle because that doesn't always happen that way. Mm -mm. In fact, when I look at some of the comments on my kids' social media outlets, it's heartbreaking. And I remember even calling up Georgia and being like, Georgia, you need to talk to flower child 187 or whatever, however they define themselves because they're really hurting. And that's when they explain to me, mom, this is really normal and it's really hard for a lot of people. I feel incredibly blessed that our family as a whole supported them. There were some bumps and there's maybe still some hurdles with saying the they, them language that type of thing, but for the most part, very supported. Have either of them ever thought about 
volunteering or doing something within the LGBTQ plus community in regard to counseling others? Not counseling because that requires a lot of training and even some degrees. I feel that Georgia's YouTube itself mm -hmm. was very supportive and hope has gotten active on using the college platform to support that community, be it either directly through the sorority or through other groups on campus to provide support. I think it's important to mention too that most universities do have LGBTQ plus community and resources that young people can reach out and have that support and have that community within the school. I think a lot of high schools now have that as well. I think that's a real change True. socially that we are seeing. We may not have that everywhere, but it was very evident even when my girls were in high school and that was quite some time ago. Yes, thank goodness that's happening. Even during orientation, it's not like the secret group that only certain people know about. It's loud and proud during orientation, as it should be. Yeah, you just want everybody to feel included. Correct. In regard to your own advocacy, mm -hmm. what do you like to do? I love to donate to LGBTQ plus programs. I hope I said that right, LGBTQ+. I'm so sorry. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> I get it mixed up all the time. <laughs> I know. I wrote this down. It's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer or questioning, plus. And plus stands for intersex, asexual, pansexual, agender, gender queer, bigender, gender variant or pan gender. So it's amazing all the different language now to make people feel included. I like to give and also I like to participate in the parades either as just a spectator or I'm even in this dance group. We will be dancing in gay pride parades, marching, dancing just to support. The biggest way I try and support the community is by trying to support my own children. If I can give them a good foundation to stand upon as a parent, a mother, an accepting mother, a learning mother, then they themselves can grow and give and share within the community, within their community. What words do you have for other parents who have children that are LGBTQ plus? The first thing I would say is don't be afraid of your own emotions. When I was going through all of this, and as I've mentioned, it's a process, I felt fear. I felt grief, I felt joy, I felt unique, I felt alone. Many different things in the process. I was so fearful something horrible would happen to my children because of the way they identify. I felt grief because I was a parent, I was female, at the time, I thought that I had girls who were binary, or I guess you would say who were interested in the opposite sex, like me. Mm -hmm. So I felt they were like me. And then I found out, no, these are individual humans. They are different than you are. I had to grieve a little bit that it wasn't going to be as I pictured. I spent a lot of time on the internet myself just Googling how to support my child when they come out, what to say and what not to say, what does bisexual mean, what does non-binary mean, 
a lot of things like that. And sometimes it would make me more scared, especially when I heard the bad things that can happen. But most of the time, I felt the more information I had, the more at peace I felt, the more I felt I can do this. Right. I felt I was on a journey with them. Let yourself feel the emotions. They'll come and go, ebb and flow with different phases in your children's lives. If I can, Michelle, I'd like to use your words. You said this in your very first podcast. I don't think it could have been said better for this subject, even though you were talking about something else. You said this. There is a door in front of all of us. You get to decide what's on the other side. Don't let fear keep you from opening that door. Don't be afraid of your next great thing. Having children in the LGBTQ plus community is your next great thing. So thank you. For those words. Uh, you made me tear <laughs> up again. <laughs> I can barely get it out because it's so moving. It's so moving. And if more people understood that, I think a lot of the problems, a lot of the hate, a lot of the fear would dissipate. We would all just enjoy being who we are. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. I really appreciate that. I think this is a great way to wrap up. Okay. <laughs> it's perfect. I could not be more happy that you agreed to be on the show today. Thank you for enlightening all of us. So glad to have you as a friend. Oh, Michelle, thank you. It's been an honor, truly. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Follow Asking for a Friend on social media outlets and provide a review and share this show wherever you get your podcasts. Reviews and sharing help us grow. 